it has in recent years been demonstrated that low androgen uh, are very detrimental to follicle development. If androgen levels are low, the early stages of follicle maturation get arrested, uh, increased follicles die and undergo apoptosis. Few follicles make it through through maturation and the oocytes of the surviving follicles are poor. Therefore, over the last few years, uh, evidence has been developing that uh, raising the androgen levels, particularly testosterone levels, uh, benefits women with low functional ovarian reserve. Animal data have demonstrated that testosterone is the decisive hormone uh, working through the androgen receptor on granulosa cells. Uh, androgens, i.e. testosterone, and FSH in those early growing follicle stages have synergistic action, meaning that the androgens enhance granulosa cell sensitivity towards uh, FSH action and thereby drive growth of follicles. Now returning to low androgen states, if androgens are low, that follicle growth does not take place. Uh, consequently, there is lower granulosa cell mass because there are fewer follicles. If there's lower granulosa cell mass produced, there are lower estradiol levels. If there are lower estradiol levels, the feedback to the pituitary uh, is interrupted and the FSH levels climb and AMH levels drop as fewer follicles uh, are growing. As a consequence, we're getting an ovarian phenotype which looks like typical primary ovarian insufficiency. Low estradiol levels, high FSH levels, and low AMH levels. But in this process, we have to remember that just like in polycystic ovary syndrome, the hyperandrogenic state associated with that syndrome can be either ovarian or adrenal in nature because androgens are produced both by adrenals and by ovaries, so can the hypoandrogenic state uh, of low functional ovarian reserve. In other words, if a woman has low androgens, uh, that can be due to poor androgen production by the thicker cells in the ovary, or it can be due to poor androgen production by the zona reticularis in the adrenals, and sometimes by both in combination that in a significant portion of women who are believed to suffer from primary ovarian insufficiency or what is widely called primarily occult primary ovarian insufficiency also called premature ovarian aging meaning uh, often young women with uh, slightly elevated FSH levels, low AMH levels, low functional ovarian reserve that when we look in these patients why their androgens are so low, we find very low DHEA sulfate. Now, DHEA sulfate is the storage form of DHEA, the precursor of testosterone, and it is exclusively, almost exclusively, produced only in the adrenals. And therefore, if a patient has low testosterone levels, but also low DHEA sulfate, it very strongly suggests that the low androgen, the low testosterone level in that patient is of adrenal origin. When the, the cause for low androgen levels lies with the adrenals, uh, the ovarian insufficiency that we see is really no longer a primary ovarian insufficiency. Because what is happening here is that androgen levels in those patients drop as a consequence follicle maturation slows down or, or stops to a large degree. The cycle I described before of low granulosa cell mass kicks in, uh, FSH levels go up, AMH levels go down, but the cause is not the ovary. The cause in these cases are the adrenal. And so uh, ac 
accurately speaking, this is not primary ovarian insufficiency. This is secondary ovarian insufficiency due to an adrenal influence on the ovaries. It is clinically very important in terms of giving patients a prognosis. In, in those situations where the low androgen is actually due to adrenal insufficiency. In those cases, once we supplement the adrenals, whether it is just with androgens or with other hormones that may be missing, uh, and raise the androgen levels, the ovary will kick in almost normally. And therefore, in those patients, obviously, the pregnancy chances are much, much higher, much, much better. Indeed, we have seen patients who had menopausal FSH levels due to this kind of adrenal insufficiency. And once we corrected that, we have even seen spontaneous pregnancies occurring. Amongst those patients who have proven low androgen levels due to adrenal insufficiency, even though low androgen levels do not currently define a diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency for that, uh, is required low cortisol or low ACTH levels uh, or low aldosterone levels, meaning the products of the other two layers of the adrenal cortex need to be abnormally low. But when we looked amongst those patients who we first identified as having an adrenal androgen deficiency, we also have by now discovered a surprising number of patients who also had deficiencies in the hormone production of other layers. One final point in regards to the importance of androgens, uh, and that relates uh, to the polycystic ovary syndrome. There is increasing evidence that PCOS is not a stable condition and that it kind of disappears as women are getting older. To our surprise, um, what we noted is that when we looked at our patients who had come to us with a diagnosis of PCOS, uh, practically all of them were of the non-obese or skinny PCOS phenotype. We, s we saw hardly any of the classical PCOS phenotype characterized by truncal obesity, acne, hirsutism, etc. It does appear to us, and this is at this point obviously just a guess, that uh, counterintuitively, the skinny PCOS patients appear to have the bigger problem in getting pregnant. It seems to us that the traditional PCOS patient uh, gets pregnant easier and therefore reaches us as a tertiary care and fertility center much more rarely. Those skinny PCOS patients have an, an, another a somewhat surprising uh, characteristic. They seem to be dropping their androgen levels as they get older much quicker than they're dropping their AMH levels. And these are patients who from their youth, when they were hyperandrogenic, when they had high androgen levels, uh, they, their ovaries got used not only to good androgen levels, but to excessive androgen levels. And therefore, these patients require androgen supplementation even more than the standard uh, patient with low functional ovarian reserve due to uh, ovarian aging. And it is very important that when you have this kind of what we have come to call the burning out PCOS patient, that they be supplemented appropriately with androgen until the androgen levels, the testosterone levels, are reaching uh, normal levels, that is levels as one sees in young women, and until their sex hormone binding globulin, which usually goes into the other direction, uh, declines back down from usually high abnormal levels to normal levels.